The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Now, the author of The Path of Least Resistance and the Tech Insider, David White. And it is a beautiful uh, Tuesday, November 6th. It is not the 5th. I forgot to move. I always forget to move my dates up. But it is Tuesday, November 6th, and we've got an erection out there. I don't know why people keep talking about it. It's a family show. But uh, all day long, they keep talking about it on the radio, on the newspapers. And I'm thinking, well, I don't know. What, what's going on out there? But uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe this, the, that's passed me by. But anyway, it is a beautiful Tuesday, November 6th out here. The uh, saxophone, it is the World Saxophone Day. The saxophone was invented in 1840. It was created by Adolf Sax. I guess he got born before the word, uh, the uh, name Adolf got uh, destroyed. I don't think you can be an Adolf anymore. I think Adolf Coors, probably the last Adolf you could be. Uh, Adolf uh, Sax, a Belgian uh, musical instrument maker. Uh, of course, uh, saxes are made of brass, but uh, 1840. Kind of seems like the saxophone would have been around a lot longer than that. Uh, but also, when's the last time you met anybody that inv invented an instrument? I can't think of an instrument that was invented in the last 60, 70 years, maybe other than a synthesizer, and I don't really look at that as an instrument. Uh, but the old saxophone... Uh, 1840. You know, they've got nine dis different saxophones. They've got a little tiny one now that's uh, maybe about 10 inches long. I didn't even know that. But uh, it is World Saxophone Day. It is uh, November, November 6th. Uh, and uh, it is uh, it is what it is. Of course, we've got uh, uh, a little movement in the market out there today. Uh, when we look at the uh, S&P uh, up, uh, what are we going to say here? Eh, eh, not quite a, uh, what, uh, eh, nine-tenths of a percent, uh, 1430 out here, eh, basically 1428 has been resistance, so we've closed under that a couple of times, each time trying to come up here on lighter volume. Uh, we are just cracking 2 billion shares today, so if uh, we close below 1428, it will be probably the third sell signal we've had in the S&P with a close below 12 or 1428. Uh, one of the most interesting things I've seen out in the market today uh, was uh, yesterday afternoon and in uh, to about noon today, uh, huge option purchases in the marketplace, uh, basically selling uh, uh, a uh, puts and calls, uh, selling a lot of calls, uh, starting at about 1390 down to about 1350, uh, and uh, starting at about uh, 1450 and higher on the upside. So uh, someone's uh, thinking, at least someone with a lot of money is thinking that uh, uh, they want protection below 1390 on the S&P and uh, protection above uh, basically uh, 1450. So uh, they're planning on a fairly decent and narrow trading range, uh, at least for the next uh, probably 45, 60 days. Uh, they're not thinking that we're going to go, well, we'd be, what, 20 points higher and uh, eh, about... Uh, but 50, 40 points lower. So a kind of interesting uh, buy out there in options land. Uh, normally the option market makers are correct. Uh, unclear if that's who it is. Wanted to go to charts a little bit early today uh, in the market uh, because uh, right now eh, not a whole lot going on. Uh, we've got, uh, see if I can get my uh, charts up here. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, some movers out here. We've got a uh, few stocks up, 1%, 2%, something like that. Uh, several stocks in the NASDAQ uh, down uh, more than 10%. Uh, when we look at uh, uh, the ones that really caught my eye uh, so far are the ones that are fairly short uh, the market. We had a, a, some stinkers last night in earnings. Uh, but this is what you don't want to see, the top stock in the uh, NASDAQ 100 uh, for today is one that is horribly short and eventually going out of business, and that's Apollo. Uh, pretty good uh, clue that uh, a lot of what we're seeing here today is a short covering. Uh, 
you know, normally you'll come into these high volume lows, uh, and we're showing this on Tiger TV right now, if you can watch it. Uh, going to do, uh, you know, just a heavy volume day on uh, 15 million shares down on the 17th of October. Uh, it's been kind of going sideways for the most part for a while. Uh, you know, could it have been consolidation? I would say so if you would have seen any kind of uh, decent volume in this uh, uh, up day out here today. But uh, just a lot of times uh, markets or even stocks are just too short to go down any farther. Uh, you need a little bit of pause to refresh. This could get back up into the $24 range before maybe setting up its next ABC down uh, to eventually zero. Uh, I don't know how many years that's out, but uh, uh, this uh, market uh, model is probably broken of for pay education in the marketplace. Uh, one that has been uh, setting up down also is STX, and that is Seagate Technology. Uh, this one had a fairly plain or very plain uh, uh, high out here on lighter volume. Here, let me do this just for a minute so I can actually see these monitors. Uh, we've got uh, a little rat that comes in here at night and moves this table back just far enough so I can't see these monitors. Uh, anyway, the, we've got uh, May 1st out here, uh, $32.55, 23 million shares. Tried to go over that, went below it. That was your sell signal. Uh, it actually came down and closed significantly above that on the uh, what, the 30th of uh, August. Yeah, is that right? August, September, yeah. Uh, and uh, we've got... Uh, you know, since then, uh, pretty much trending down. Uh, they had a lot of things going for them, but uh, uh, just the withholding, uh, uh, withholding of Windows 8 kind of put a, a real problem back in uh, Seagate technology. Uh, and, you know, we're seeing a light volume day up. Uh, this is probably very close. Uh, you had kind of a little ABC form. Uh, this is kind of the second one. Uh, it looks like you may get one more that would take you back in. Uh, to the $24 level if volume uh, remains very light here. Let me see if I can go ahead and pull those up. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, we need a smaller time frame to take a look at this. Uh, maybe even that. Uh, what I'm looking at is this could be, uh, let me get here, set this up. Hey. Had it there. Let's see, there we go. Sorry about the dead air. Uh, but uh, you've got basically your uh, 618 retrace uh, up here today, and it is fairly light volume. That would set up the next ABC down in Seagate Technology, STX. And again, we're probably going to know. Uh, tomorrow, whether you see any weakness in this, uh, but it probably setting up. Of course, both Seagate and Western Digital had uh, a, a basically a windfall with a uh, typhoon uh, in Southeast Asia that wiped out all the three and a half inch drive production. Of course, at, at the same time, everybody was trying to move to two and a half inch drives. But uh, the interesting part of that is that the scarcity finally allowed them to start making some margin on those drives. Uh, that is slowly evaporating. At the same time, uh, they were acquiring some of the other uh, disk drive makers like Toshiba, which had its own problems from the tsunami in Japan. Uh, and uh, so there's a little less uh, supply, but eventually uh, Seagate, Western Digital get back to uh, the 8% margins instead of the 18% margins that they normally haven't enjoyed. Uh, but if we look at this in ABC, uh, not a bad looking ABC right here if today is the high. Uh, the A would start on September 26 at $32.25. We get down to the B point on October 23rd, 13 million shares. Uh, we bossed up and volume kind of like eh, six, seven million shares so far today. Uh, but uh, we get up to thirty dollars twenty-five cents, uh, six and a half million shares so far. Uh, you know that's not a bad little setup. Now what you're looking for is these high volume uh, days, and what I've been waiting for is Seagate to eventually get back to this high volume day sign of strength that they it, it popped out on. That was actually on uh, June 29th. This thing popped up on, what, 89, almost 90 million shares. Uh, and, uh, you know, once you pop out of there, 
uh, it's not uncommon for you to come back into that uh, move and uh, and see kind of a nice little uh, uh, you know run, but eventually you are coming back to that high volume day, and that's uh, puts your one to one at 24.75, uh, which is exactly where this uh, uh, top of this uh, high volume day started. So pretty much looking like that would be fairly interesting. Uh, Rangold, uh, G O L D, uh, G O L D. Uh, well, we're looking at this. Let me get out of the expansions here. Um, you know, kind of a nice little counter trend into two gaps down. Um, you did get back and test this gap uh, that had set up. Uh, let's see, high volume. Day. Yeah, you know, uh, you could say yeah, it's a little noisy out here. Uh, but you did gap up fairly extensively on September 14th. Uh, that uh, day basically brought you uh, back in over the last few days. But you gapped up on 1.4 million shares on like, uh, what was that, September 14th. We got into it the last couple of days with 500,000, 300,000 shares. Uh, not an unimpressive that you'd see a lot of these stocks have a little bounce. What you don't have here today is exactly what everybody feared, which is a uh, fairly big candle and 250,000 shares. Uh, we'll say maybe there's, uh, uh, let's see if we've got anything else. Uh, let me just check this to make sure. Uh, oh, that's on. We yeah. let me get to it here. Oh, rats! I have to sort this thing by uh, percentage change, and I moved it. Yeah, there we go. Let's go back up the other way. Okay, see, go round, wrangle. There we go. Uh, let's see what do we have for volume here today? Yeah, five. Oh no, that's not right. Where is that? Yeah, I guess that is right. So uh, kind of low volume today in Rangold Resources. Got to start looking at those. Start thinking that uh, eh, maybe there's something going on out here that you would really want to look at. Uh, on the downside, we had two uh, earnings uh, announcements that uh, didn't go well. Uh, Express Scripts Holdings, ESRX. And let me get that up here. Uh, this thing just uh, blew out this morning. Uh, right through the uh, eh, pretty much the gap, everything that you expect f for it. Um, uh, but it's uh, going to find uh, maybe we found some pre-market gaps out here. Fifty-one dollars twenty-nine cents. I wonder if that's right or not. Uh, but uh, looks like we're back in. Uh, what is that? Fifty-five, sixty. Yeah. So you're back in that day. I don't know. Maybe that was a bad tick from earlier this morning. I have to go back and look through the time and sales. Uh, but, uh, you know, you've got something that totally closed that gap. Uh, this thing uh, could be setting up to go much lower. Uh, probably going to, on days like this, uh, that is a good example of a, a uh, exhaustion move on the stock. Uh, probably not going to get that movement here in the next few days. Uh, but uh, could get maybe a close of that gap and then start setting up uh, for weaker prices. Looks like $50, $51 $50 probably in the area of uh, long-term support uh, after the earnings disaster. We'll get back to the other one, which is Fossil in a minute. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain Obtain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, as we come back, uh, you know, we've got uh, probably the biggest mover out here moving this market today uh, is uh, commodities. We've got uh, crude up about three bucks, back up to 88 bucks. Uh, uh, I think it's probably going to, kind of a little counter move here, uh, going to work, uh, but remind me to get some gas on the way home. I'm sure they'll uh, be more than quick to uh, put those gas prices up. Uh, but uh, when I'm looking at uh, this, you know, you see that and you see gold up 30 bucks in a day. Uh, it, these tend to be counter moves over oversold conditions. I suspect we're seeing the same thing, that there's probably no fundamental reasons uh, why they move this much and when you look at the uh you know dollar index off 18 cents uh, probably not a lot of reasons out there maybe just uh, uh oversold conditions this market is extremely short uh and that's why we see stocks like apollo and rim uh continue to pop uh even though there's no hope for them the kind of the living dead of stocks just looking for a place to go out and uh, uh die uh but uh it'll be interesting what about elections? Uh, no, 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 no. They went, crude went up, uh, my producer is saying. The elections actually caused the, uh, the uh, crude to jump three bucks, but I don't think he understands that uh, what we're talking about is uh, that uh, probably, I don't know, maybe you want to get into uh, uh, commodities on the day of the election, in case something and everything goes to hell in a handbasket. 
Eh, I think there's probably some other reasons out there. But it doesn't look like uh, the dollar index is one of those. Anyway, I wanted to get back to some uh, stocks here. Uh, Weight Watchers, we talked about yesterday. They had earnings coming out. I said that this was a possible ABC on the way up. Uh, I don't play them in my newsletter, but I bring them up on the radio show sometime. Of course, you'd have to be sitting right next to a terminal to play any of these. So not uh, always the best for uh, the average trader, but I really like this setup yesterday. Uh, that was you had a uh, high volume low. You did a, a little bit of ABC up here. Uh, you pulled back to that C point uh, and, uh, you know, retrace uh, just about your 618 retrace. Uh, and that set up the bigger move out here, uh, which is uh, even just on a one to one, $63.30. Uh, so we continue to look at uh, well, some of these others. What was I talking about when we uh, left? Uh, I think it was a NASDAQ stock. Oh, Fossil, F O S L. I don't think we talked about that. FOSL uh, was the other one. Uh, it's down you know, 11, 12 percent or so on it. So as we uh, look at this one, uh, another one uh, popped up. You know, you, you're pretty much going to find support at these high volume gap days, and that's exactly what Fossil did. Uh, this thing tried three times to get back into the larger gap where it just got blown apart. Uh, now, you know, you're probably going to see some consolidation in this, uh, but it's uh, one that's going to be on my list here for a while. Uh, we've got Nick from Oklahoma. How are you doing, Nick? Thank you, David. How are you? Fantastic. All right. Just in case you didn't hear, it's, there is misspelling. Instead of R, it's L, but I guess you already know about it. Today is uh, election day, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right. All right. I, was, I was just ki I was just kidding out there. I was going to I was hoping someone would come up and say uh, it was really the elections. Never yes. mind. Anyway, Never mind. a little Rosanna oh. Rosanna Dana history there. Uh, anyway, uh, we do have the right symbol for the stock, right? Cirrus Logic. What? Cirrus Logic. If you have moment. Yep. Uh, I've got several moments, and uh, we're looking at this. Uh, so, what are you thinking about doing with this? Well, I'm not sure why it was punished that badly, but I just thought to look into it as a play on Apple. I'm pretty sure Apple will be coming out of a little bit uh, down uh, trend in the weeks to come. So I thought Serious Logic might be one of the plays, maybe? Uh, it could be. Let me see if I actually have uh, uh, Apple parts. Uh, are you watching Tiger TV? Uh, I will just get to the computer. I just stepped out. Okay, but, well, the, you, I'll just go through these, but you can watch them later. Uh, it is uh, archived. I've got my list of stocks for Apple because, of course, it controls so much of the market out here. And you want to be looking at uh, these stocks if you're trying to make a play on Apple. The first one's Arms Holdings. They, uh -huh. they design the uh, chips that actually drive it. Uh, there is some discussion that uh, Apple's getting into uh, designing its chips uh, on its uh, on the uh, on their PCs uh, from Intel. I think that that's a lot of hot air. Can you hang through the break? Yes, I can. Thank okay. you, David. We'll be back. We're going to go through the uh, Apple supply chain here real quick. And uh, you know, for me, uh, that isn't one of the stocks out here that's really going to move based on anything that Apple does. But we will go through those stocks uh, with Nick in just a minute when we come back. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides 
Sports Traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we come back, we've got Nick on the line. He was interested in uh, Cirrus Logic. Uh, yep. Let's go with that first, and then I'm going to go kind of uh, fairly quickly through the Apple supply chain. But this thing came down. It came down on heavier volume than the gap up that started this whole thing uh, actually did. So on 731, uh, what is that, uh, June 31st? This thing popped up really strongly, uh, basically uh, almost 14 million shares, uh, but uh, it came back down in uh, one gap, and then the next day the volume really came in. But you had, uh, what, uh, 17 million shares that first day, and then you had 7 million, uh, 8 million shares the next day. So you're back into support, uh, but way on way too much volume out here. This thing's going to take a while to base out. Even if it, this thing does turn up, it's probably going to go sideways, I'd say, for a month or two. And that's if it's lucky if it didn't go any lower. Uh, but if you're really looking for the Apple supply chain stocks, uh, 
Arms Holding is the number one because, of course, they design chips but do not manufacture them. They license the design to all the uh, companies out there that want to put uh, processors in their smartphones and tablets. Uh, they actually don't look too bad out here, but uh, volume's kind of light over the last few days. This could be another one that starts uh, looking a little weak uh, here fairly shortly. I think this thing's going to come back into the gap about 29 uh, if uh, the market turns back on it. Uh, another one is Avago Technologies. Uh, they make kind of radios uh, that go in uh, these smartphones. Uh, when you look at that, you know, not a lot to, to really hang your hat on uh, with Avago. Uh, it's been kind of going sideways here for the last, what, four, eh, 10, 14 days, something like that, maybe longer, uh, bouncing between 33 and 34. Uh, normally, when you come out of one of these uh, big... Uh, um, movements from high to low, from high to low, like this thing, and you base out. The first movement uh, is going to be strong and to the wrong side. It's going to be the head fake. So whichever way this thing breaks first, uh, probably look to the opposite side of that a few days later. Uh, same thing when we're looking at Micron Technologies. This thing's been basing out uh, a while now. Uh, and, of course, uh, if you're going to make a smartphone or a tablet, uh, you need memory, and that's what these guys do, MU, the symbol in it. But, uh, uh, you know, they've had a higher volume low in the last low, so I'm suspecting that they have uh, at least another chance to go down to $5.16. But when you look at the June 4th, uh, 4th low at $5.30, this thing went below it uh, with heavier volume of 46 million shares. So, you know, another 50%. Uh, and this thing's going up, and, you know, is the volume okay today? Yeah, but it's uh, not great. Another one you want to look at is OVTI. It's OmniVision Technologies, OVTI. They make the cameras that go in these phones. And when we're looking at this, especially if you're thinking that uh, the semiconductor industry is going to turn around, uh, kind of uh, basically what we're looking at in Avago, which is you've had this real low move, you had the real high move. It came back close to the bottom again. It tried to go back up to the top again. And now it's gone sideways. Uh, normally, you're going to get a huge move with big volume. It's going to last about two or three days. And I don't know if today's the uh, first day of that. But normally, you get one day with decent volume because you've got too many people short. Uh, you bust through that, and then there's nothing. Uh, now, if it went to the downside, that would be also something you could look at. Uh, Qualcomm. Uh, exactly the same pattern in all these stocks, uh, at least most of the stocks that supply Apple uh, and smartphone manufacturers. The exact same thing in this. You keep getting tighter and tighter moves. Uh, and, uh, you know, once you get to about three, if you could put a big greater than sign on this, uh, you would get uh, out here uh, about three-fourths of the way. And as soon as it gets about three-fourths of the way through what you could draw a greater than symbol on the chart on, uh, based on the highs and lows, uh, you start getting into what they call an asymmetrical triangle. And that's when you get those f uh, false moves for the first move, and you want to fade those moves on the opposite side. Starworks, uh, Skyworks Solutions, uh, they make uh, radio stuff. Uh, look at this one, uh, heavy volume down here, uh, at least on two days. Uh, you had it again on, what was that, Friday? Uh, another heavy volume day down. You are to a gap, so you might find some uh, light uh, support out here, and that's SWKS. The last one in the big supply chain out here is Triquent Semiconductor. This one looks a whole lot better than Cirrus. If you were looking for a play, uh, it, had, it needs to get back down to $3 and what, 97 cents, the November 23rd low of last year on lighter volume. It had heavier volume out here on October 26, uh, 7.5 million shares. So these things still are waiting to finish uh, testing these longer term lows out here. Uh, when four of the six of these tell you that lower prices are coming, I can't say that uh, you'd probably want to be in Cirrus or want to be in the uh, supply chain for uh, both uh, tablets and uh, uh, cell phones. So, any questions on all that? I know I went through a bunch of them real quick, but... No, this is much more than I was asking. Thank <laughs> you very much. Yeah.
<laughs> but I mean, that's, if you're thinking that semiconductors are turning around, those are the stocks you need to start looking at because those are the ones that theoretically should be doing absolutely gangbusters with everybody and their dog making a cell phone and a tablet. And, and at least part of this stuff is going in uh, to every one of them. Uh, you could look at Qualcomm, too, uh, since they make radio parts. Uh, let me, let's look at those that one real quick, oh, if I can spell it correctly. Qualcomm. And I, hopefully you're watching Tiger TV and you see these, yep. just the same pattern in every single one of these. And, and like I said, this is normally, um, you know, you get, uh, you get higher lows and lower highs. And the, and, the, and the price just keeps getting closer and closer uh, to the midpoint, which is, is right now about 60 bucks. Then it'll go sideways for a few days, and then you'll have the break. You'll have the breakout on one way or the other, and I'd say seventy-five percent of the time that breakout is to the false side. But you'll know within about a day or two. Uh, you'll get one day, maybe two, with some a little bit of volume, and then it just evaporates, and then it's over, and you know uh, that you're going downtown, or you're going uh, if it tries to break down, and you get volume one or two days, and then no volume then that's the head fake to the south side. So I'm, right. I'm thinking right now that we've got, I don't know, 10 more, maybe five, 10 more trading days. We're going to see this pattern in almost all these stocks, or at least half of these stocks that are in the supply chain for tablets and cell phones uh, resolve itself. And then that's the time to bite. Right now, I think uh, uh, you've got just a lot of noise here until uh, all these patterns resolve themselves. I see. So kind of cheap tight and uh, yeah. I, I'm thinking you're going to see a big movement out here. I still think, especially when I started seeing big guys buy uh, puts to the downside today, uh, starting at about 1390 and going down to 1350, uh, that uh, somebody's uh, betting that, or, or at least uh, buying a lot of insurance, uh, that we are going lower through uh, Christmas. Um, and going, you know, seeing that from yesterday to today, uh, makes me think that we'll probably know it in the next couple of days because they were fairly large purchases in the S and P uh, uh, puts and calls out there, um, and uh -huh. we'll see how that works out. But uh, I think that we probably may have one or two decent days like we've had today, and then we're going to see uh, this market uh, uh, probably start looking at the fiscal cliff is the next thing that we need to get to, and uh, I think that they're going to probably quickly figure out there's no easy solution to that and the market's going to start selling off. Anyway, I want to thank you for the call unless you have another question. Well, obviously I have, but I will let others probably, uh, other callers to uh, chip in and uh, or get in to okay. the, your trade call. Well, I, I probably, probably gave you a lot to think about here, but look at those stocks. Absolutely. Look at those stocks and I think that's going to give you the good indication because those are uh, are probably the best ones to think about uh, that would turn around uh, and show s maybe a sign of strength before some of the other uh, SMH stocks could. In fact, uh, thank you for the phone call. I'm going to take a look at the SMH because I haven't looked at them uh, in a day or two. But again, you know, you get we go back to it. It's the exact same pattern in all these things. Uh, they're all following this kind of uh, other than the SMHs came back one more time. Uh, and this is why I'm probably a little bit more bearish. Uh, than anybody else. And of course, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. That's 877-927-6648. Uh, but what I dislike is this higher volume low uh, that we retested on uh, July 17th. Uh, the previous low on June 4th came in on 1.7 million shares in the SMHs. Uh, you went up uh, 500,000 shares on that uh, July 17th low. You also didn't hit that low well, yeah, I guess you did with one by one penny, uh, but uh, you came into it, hit that low, heavier volume. Uh, we've been, you know, you get ups and downs. Markets don't go straight up, or straight down. Uh, but this one actually looks like uh, uh, just like we were looking at Weight Watchers that could possibly be a uh, a ABC uh, uh, up. This one looks like it certainly uh, could get to the point of being an ABC down. Let me take a look at this here. Uh, and expansions. Uh, there we are. Okay, so when that you've got, uh, well, you know, we've done a 0.577 retrace. Uh, you probably think maybe we can get to that 618 retrace, which would just be a little bit higher. Uh, but that would set up an ABC down 
that would take you back in the SMHs uh, to what, uh, $28.81. And without, you know, just seeing the light volume we see today uh, in the SMHs and the light volume in the entire market, uh, you know, it makes me think that uh, if we don't have heavy volume and a big move tomorrow, uh, that maybe we are seeing the last move uh, in this market. We've got 1431 on the S&P, uh, very light volume, which is, you know, before an election, not a big deal. 2.2, uh, 2.3 eh, billion shares means we're probably going to come in with about 3.1 billion shares by the end of the day, which is a light volume day. So I'm going to continue to think uh, without a heavy volume update tomorrow, some kind of continuous movement up here that we're just continuing uh, to flail about a little bit uh, in this market and not really see uh, what we're looking for, which is uh, a, a good signal either long or short. I think you could probably make a good case either way, uh, but uh, right now I'm seeing so many of these stocks, uh, like we talked about at the beginning of the show, uh, the majority of them, things like uh, Fossil, uh, there's always a disaster du jour. These things are down 15, 20, 25 percent overnight. Um, I've got uh, a handful of shorts out there. I'm going to probably, if we get a continuation uh, down signal tomorrow, I've got uh, probably three or four that I want to continue to add on to this, uh, along with uh, maybe a, a play uh, in energy uh, tomorrow. And, but uh, it's kind of looking at it today. I may have missed my little energy move today, but I think I'm uh, going to get one more shot at it on numbers tomorrow uh, in the energy sector that we have. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can't uh, load up some other. Uh, let's see, there we go. Uh, and take a look at some how these uh, some of these other uh, uh, stocks are looking. Uh, I sell. Uh, I sh I can't even say it. I shares Silver Trust SLV. Uh, put this one in the uh, newsletter this morning. Uh, I thought maybe you might get back down to this gap uh, at twenty nine. Uh, it had a nice little pop, but again, light volume out here, uh, not beyond the scale of reason, again, because of the election. A lot of people may be trying to get in front of some of these. Uh, the SLF, which is uh, Sun Life Financial, uh, this is another one to be watching. This one's trended very well over a fairly good length of time, uh, but it's come up and tested its high. It uh, needs uh, about another 20 cents, so I'm watching this as uh, Canary in the Coal Mine, the September 14th high, uh, $25.73 uh, with 700,000 shares. Uh, we came into that uh, with about 300,000 less on November 2nd. Uh, it, of course, hasn't hit that high, and you would like to see it uh, before you pull a short on it. But this one has a nice trading range, and uh, uh, you know, you're not going to make a ton of money overnight, but a uh, uh, fairly uh, good trending stock, uh, which uh, well, I'd rather have a good trending stock than one that uh, was just too hard to trade. Another one that kind of uh, hit me today is Serana Dental Systems, S-I-R-O. We look at that uh, high volume or a low volume test, and we're going to get a close uh, below or yeah below the previous high. Uh, so if we get a continuation on this tomorrow, uh, we'll know. But the October 5th high, $59.18, uh, uh, 600,000 shares. Uh, we got above that uh, last couple of days with 400,000. Going to have lighter volume today and most likely a close uh, below that uh, $59.18 level. So uh, there's one to be uh, checking out. Uh, SMG, Silicon Image. Uh, this is a couple of the ones we were talking about. I think maybe even... Uh, yesterday, I have to think, it was in the newsletter this morning, of ones that I thought uh, had come back at least to support uh, in the market. Of course, you can always get my newsletter a free two-week trial, but uh, uh, not only do I put my picks in there, but uh, pretty much all the stocks uh, that look like they've come back to some support or resistance level uh, to give you an idea of what I'm looking at. Uh, and some of the things you could probably play on yourself. But uh, SIMG, uh, huge uh, day up uh, back on, what is that, uh, yeah, first day, we'll be back in a minute. 
Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. As we come back, uh, you know, we've got a few of these stocks out here, but I do that every day. I'm going to go in my editorial mode a little bit more than I do usual, uh, usually. But uh, I think today is a very good day um, for traders to learn decision making and also uh, learn to be able to turn off uh, what they hear on the news and listen to the things that uh, are most important. Uh, let's say that you're trying to figure out who's going to win the election uh, and hopefully it gets solved uh, today or tomorrow night. I think uh, it's the, the race is probably not very close. We're probably going to know, I don't know, by midnight here on the Eastern 
a seaboard who won it, and I think uh, there's some reasons why. But uh, probably the biggest reason that we don't know uh, who's going to win the election is the press. Uh, for the most part, they're about a horse race. Uh, and this isn't any different than on financial in information TV uh, that we see all day at Bloomberg or CNBC. Uh, that the whole thing is to keep you watching, and they know it. They can't, uh, you know, it's you know, it's tough for them because they need to make everything look uh, like some kind of an emergency or a big deal, uh, even when it's not, especially on a day when there's light news volume. Uh, but you know, the idea that they are giving us a clear picture one way or the other. Frankly, I think from looking at the data uh, that they're insane to say that the uh, the uh, election results are going to be uh, real close. I think that you know they basically have come with a narrative, and that narrative is it's real close. Well, the last time they said it was real close uh, was a recall election uh, for a uh, governor in uh, uh, the Midwest. Well, uh, what was that? The beginning of the summer, or whatever. Oh, it's close. Oh, it's close. Well, he won by more than when he uh, won his election the first time. And it's not a Republican or a Democratic uh, uh, Party issue. It is uh, the idea that if they told you it was a blowout, who's going to watch their silly telecast tonight? Um, and even if it's not a blowout, you know, for them... Uh, to oversample one side of a, a party because, uh, you know, four years ago, a lot more people turned up on one other side. Uh, wouldn't you use the one, the last major election in 2010? Or do you have to use only presidential elections? Wouldn't you even average it maybe between the two? I think that there's a lot invested in making sure uh, that uh, this election is close so you'll watch the horrible uh, re election results tonight. Um, one of the things, though, uh, that you really need to guard against is listening to this kind of information. Uh, the worst part about it is they don't have a lot of time. Uh, people on the TV are not as paid as much as you would think, uh, and they don't have a lot of time to do show prep, or other people do it for them, and a lot of those people are lazy. Uh, there is a thing called firehouse mentality, uh, and what you don't want to do is get into this as a trader. Uh, but uh, they took, uh, I think it was in the 80s, they did a psychological study. And uh, they took a, a very conservative uh, firehouse that uh, everybody kind of leaned to the right. They took a very liberal uh, firehouse. And uh, some of the people got moved uh, uh, from one house to the other, a few. But uh, there was still 10, like 10 or 12 guys were uh, conservative and the other, you know, maybe two of them were liberal. And over time... Uh, the liberal people got more conservative, and the conservative people uh, over in the other firehouse got uh, more liberal. Uh, there is a convergence of opinion when everybody has lots of time to blab and doesn't have lots of time to think or lots of time to work, especially uh, when you do have as much downtime as you have in a firehouse. Um, but uh, the survey in the psychological study pretty much proved that they will converge in their opinions. Uh, the media isn't any different. Uh, they're all coming to the same conclusion. It's probably wrong. Uh, it doesn't really matter who wins or loses tonight. I think as a trader, you want to see how to look through that news and understand it and understand the biases, uh, whoever's reporting it. You have a great and safe night, and vote yes for Proposition No.